Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. You can sit right here, just any one of those empty seats. <coughs> Quine. Hello, Lieutenant. Which line are the Udo boys in? Uh, first line, I think. Let's see. Yeah, Tommy Young, number one. Ernest Conway, number two. And George Holstamp, number three. All in the first bunch. Are these all the witnesses? Yeah. May I, hope I they have can do your some attention, good. please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a numbered name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back to their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. (coughs) The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, all right, keep it moving. Walk right over to the end of the stage. Turn and face front. Hands to your sides and look straight ahead. That's right. Now it's a big room out there, a lot of people in it, so you'll have to talk up, boys. So everybody can hear you now. All right. Number one, Tommy Young, murder. Take your hat off, Tommy. Now don't look at me, look at the people. Where do you live, Tommy? Regency Hotel. You'll have to talk up. Regency Hotel. Tommy Young, 16 arrests, two convictions, grand theft, auto, narcotics violations, served eight years and three months at Leavenworth, a year and a day at state prison. Who were you arrested with, Tommy? Oh, you know him. You better talk a little louder. You know him. A little louder. You know them! Now, who were you arrested with? Ernest Conway and George Holstamp right back there standing against the wall. Hmm? Keep facing front. We can see them. Good for you. You uh, boys work for Lester Udo, don't you? We don't work for nobody. We don't even get along. I guess we're what you call antisocial. That isn't what I'd call you. That's pretty funny. I hope you have a pleasant stay with us. Well, that's even funnier. Number two, Ernest Conway, murder. All right, Ernest, come on, move up to the front of the stage. Yes, sir. And take your hat off. Yes, sir. Something funny? Yes, sir. Well, we could use a laugh. Ernest Conway, 22 arrests, two convictions, assault with a deadly weapon, breaking and entering, served five years at Sing Sing. Who were you arrested with, Ernest? Tommy Young and George Holstein. Any weapons? Yes, sir. I kind of think there was. What were they? Well, near as I can remember, two knives, probably six guns. Any of you three boys ever been in the cigar store at the corner of Lucas and Jefferson? Couldn't say about the other two boys, but I don't smoke. (laughs) You work for Lester Udo, don't you? Who? Lester Udo. Don't believe I know the gentleman. All right. Thank you, Ernest. It was my pleasure, Sergeant. Number three, George Holstamp, murder. Get your hands out of your pockets. Where do you live, George? Pine Park. Where? 119 Sutton Drive. You boys sure don't like getting arrested, do you? Depends on who arrests me. I'm sorry if the boys weren't polite. Sure. What's your business, George? Keeping my nose out of other people's. Well, then what were you doing in the cigar store last night? Who says I was in any cigar store? You know Ernest Conway and... Yeah. Wait till I ask the question. Well, I know what you were going to say, so... You'll wait anyway. Well, don't yell like that. You scare me to death. Stand up straight. I'm tired. Asher, show him how to stand up straight. Okay, okay, okay. How's this? Sloppy, sloppy, but it'll do. Forget it, Asher. He gets the idea. All right, George, now that you're a little nicer, we'll tell the people about you. No sense in having your nasty disposition influence them. 
George Holstamp, 28 arrests, three convictions, grand theft auto, served six years state prison, narcotics violation, served a year in a day county jail. Assault, served three years in state prison. How old are you, George? 30. You work for Lester Udo, don't you? No. All right, step back against the wall. Are there any questions or identifications from the audience? Now, hold it a minute, Matt. Hmm? Now, you don't have to worry about any of these men. They can't see you. They don't know who you are. If any of you, those men, have come into your shops and intimidated you, just tell us, and we'll see that they won't give you any more trouble. Any questions or identifications from the audience? Well, how about it, folks? I uh, ben? Uh, just a second, Matt. I wouldn't think that's... Now, look, I promise you, you don't have a thing to worry about. We'll give you all the protection you'll need. Now, how about it? Uh, Mrs. Fisher? No, I don't think I've seen any of them. I, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Henderson? Yeah? Uh, did one of these men come into your shop the other day and try to push you around? I, I don't know. I, I don't think... If you recognize one of them, or even all three of them, please tell us. I promise you nothing will happen. No, I, I, no, I don't think I ever seen any of them before, no. I, I don't uh, none of you? This. No, I no, couldn't no. say. Matt? Yeah, Ben? No identifications. Oh, folks, I can assure you that these men cannot Matt, possibly... Matt, run on the next bunch. Yes, sir. Run them up. You uh, want to see me, Ben? Yeah. This one's got me a little sore, Matt. Well, you didn't expect the witnesses to make an identification, did you? Well, I had hopes. Ah, none of the others have. Why should these be any different? Because this time somebody's been killed. All the more reason for not saying anything. They're scared. They're scared stiff. Yeah. I'd probably be just as scared. They've got families to think about. Yeah, I know it. Well, what do you want to see me for? Because it's going to be a while before I cool off. Well, you're not going to take it out on me. Mm-hmm. Unless to you, though. I'm going to tell him what I think of him. He knows what you think of him, Ben. I haven't ever told him. What do you mean? Sure you have. Not all of it. Hey, you better cool down. After I tell him. You think that's a good idea? No. Well, then forget it, forget it. He knows it won't do any good. No. <sighs> okay. I mean, no, I'm not going to forget it. Ben. I feel rotten. I, I, I just feel plain rotten. I'm going to get it off my chest. Okay. I know I'm not using my head, but doggone it, Matt. Okay, okay. Want to come along? Oh, I wouldn't miss it. You think it's a mistake, though, huh? Uh-huh. You wouldn't do it, huh? What do you mean, I wouldn't do it? Sure, sure, I'd do it. But I still think it's a mistake. If it was up to me, I'd do just what you're doing. But I can't see why you should be as stupid as I am. Well, I haven't pounded the beat in a long time. I could use the exercise. Yeah, hey, you are being unpleasant today. <laughs> See you, boys. Sit down, sit down. Let me get you a drink. No, thanks, Udo. All right. What can I do for you? I've got three of your boys down in the tank. Three of my boys? Yeah. Young Conway and Holstamp. Young Conway and Holstamp. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'd still like to know what I can do for you. We got them booked on a murder rap. Young Conway and Holstamp. That's right. <laughs> well, look, Lieutenant, what's this got to do with me? One of those boys beat up a man named Goldberg. Beat him up bad. Goldberg died. And one of those boys did it? That's right. Who says so? I do. <laughs> that isn't much good now, is it, Lieutenant? You can't hold them on that, can you? For 72 hours. You uh, sure I can't buy you and the sergeant a drink? I didn't come down here to play with you, Udo. Well, fine. Just what did you come down here for, Guthrie? You've been running numbers free and easy in this town for a long time, Udo. You've got every small businessman intimidated up to the eyebrows. This is going to be a sermon, Lieutenant? You've pushed him around, scared him to death, and made yourself about four million a year. You say that, too. Now a little guy named Goldberg doesn't want your lousy racket in a shop, so one or two or three of your gorillas try to change his mind. Now, wait just you a minute. You listen to what I have to say, you know. Not when you're running off at the mouth. You're listening like it. Not at that kind of libel. I won't listen to. You go chase yourself out of here and come back with some proof before you start calling names. You don't like something, then get out. You're out of line, Guthrie. I don't have to sit here and take anything from you. You know. Yeah. Why don't you have us thrown out? Now, that's not a bad idea, Sergeant. 
I think it's a fine idea. I'd love for you to start something. If I did, you'd be back pounding a beat. Might be worth it. You're trespassing without a warrant. That's right. Then get out of here. I swear if it's the last thing I do, I'll have you both busted right back to directing traffic. You know something you don't? I don't think you can do it. I'd like to see you try, though. Oh, so would I. Which one's it going to be, you know? Have us thrown out or have us busted? Well, one thing, sure, Guthrie. You and your muscle-bound friend here are out looking for trouble. And very honestly, I'm not a bit worried. So try and start all the trouble you can. But there's no law that says I've got to sit around while you're doing it. Uh, you going somewhere you... Now, look, I've put up with an awful the lot. The lieutenant's got something to say, and you're going to listen. Why, to you two-bit flatfoot? Who do you think you're trying to cry? I don't think you understand, you do darn right I don't understand. Who put you up to this? Who did? You're both too smart to pull off a stunt like this. Who wants to ride me? <laughs> you just don't get it, do you? No, explain it to me. The lieutenant's in a nasty mood. That's it? That's it. Now, you were going to call your boys or have us busted or walk out of here. We say you're going to listen. What's it going to be? All right, shoot off your face. Go ahead, get it off your back. You've got a lot of people scared, Udo. A lot of people worried about what you might do if they point out one of your boys. One of your boys went a little far this time. I'm going to get him, and I'm going to get you. That's all of it? For a while. Then get out. You get it now, don't you, Udo? Get what? Oh, we just wanted you to know how much you scare us. <laughs> Nineteen fifty saw the second greatest incidence of infantile paralysis in the history of the United States. It's estimated there were over thirty thousand cases. Staggering statistics, aren't they? Well, there's something each and every one of us can do to help cut down that number. Give to the March of Dimes. Give as much and as generously as you can, and help the fight against this dread disease. Join the nineteen fifty one March of Dimes. <laughs> Right down here, man. The shop's closed. No, they live around back. Mmm, somebody's cooking. Yeah, lots of garlic. Smells great. Yeah? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Come in. Well, thank you, thank you. Now, this is Sergeant Greb, Mrs. Goldberg. How do you do, Sergeant? How do you do, Mr. Goldberg? You cooking? No, I... I'm not cooking. Well, we could smell something good when we came up the walk. One of my neighbors, probably Mrs. Feinsman. She starts dinner early. Oh. Please, sit down. Uh, thank you, thanks. Lots of garlic? Yeah. Mrs. Feinsman. Uh, how are you getting along, Mrs. Goldberg? Not so good, Lieutenant. Abraham and I were married 38 years next month. It's lonesome. Have you got them in? No proof. No witnesses. But some of the other shop owners. Abraham said the other shop owners were all running this numbers game. Well, they're afraid. They won't testify. Oh, but that's not right. If they know something, they should say so. Well, they're afraid of what might happen to themselves and their families. But it's a bigger trouble this way. They've all kept quiet and my Abraham was killed. They'll just say your Abraham was killed because he refused to operate the numbers game for these men. But the numbers game is against the law. If we're going to live like decent people, we must obey the law. Sometimes a family's safety is more important than the law, Mrs. Goldberg. A family's safety is the law, Lieutenant. Without the law, there is no real safety. Just fear. <sighs> Who are we arguing for? You are arguing for both. People are human. And you're arguing both for the law and for people because they are human and sometimes are afraid. Oh, excuse well, me. Surely, Miss Goldberg. Good evening, Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, Mr. Henderson, please come in. Well, I just stopped by come to in, tell you. Come in, come in. Would you have company? I don't want it's any. It's all right, food. Mr. Henderson. 
This is Lieutenant... Oh, we know, Mr. Oh, Henderson. Lieutenant Guthrie, I didn't see. We asked Mr. Henderson down to see if he could identify any of the men who've been working for Lester Udo. Oh? I'm afraid Mr. Henderson couldn't help us much. Mrs. Goldberg, Would you I... like some coffee, Mr. Henderson? No, thank some you. Some cake. I have some good homemade cake. No, 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 thank you. I just stopped in to tell you... How sorry I am, and if there's anything I can you do... You sell numbers in your store, don't you, Mr. Mrs. Henderson? Mrs. Goldberg... I'm sure the officers know about it. I should be going. My wife, she'll have dinner ready. I, sh- I should be going. Well, we've got to be running along, too, Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, well, it was nice you stopped by. All of you, thank you, Lieutenant, Sergeant. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. You're all very kind. If there's anything we can do, just let us know. Huh? Thank you. Anything you might need, me and the wife, we would like to do... Anything we can do. You know. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. It's nice to know people want to help. Isn't it, Lieutenant? Certainly is. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Goldberg. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you again. Can we give you a lift, Mr. Henderson? No, no, thank you, Lieutenant. I, I live just around the corner. Fine woman, Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, quite a woman. Her husband gets killed and she worries about her friends. Fine woman. Wonderful. You know, she was sure right. About what, Lieutenant? Oh, she said something about families and the law. That without the law, there wasn't any real safety, just fear. With her husband's killers loose, she's worried about her friends. And if one of her friends knew something and he told it? What about his family, then? Well, I'll answer that the way I think Mrs. Goldberg would. There's no real family without the law. Better hurry, Mr. Henderson. Your dinner's probably getting cold. Lieutenant? Hello, Quine. Hey, you need a shave, boy. Uh, Got up late. Chief wants to see you, Lieutenant. He's a little hot. Uh Uh-oh. You don't? Mm-hmm. You want to see me, too? Oh, he'll probably get around to you. Uh, just Lieutenant Guthrie for now. Well, I'll get it over with. Uh, look, look, I was in on this, too, you know. If he wants you, will start yelling. I'll see you upstairs. Okay. Good luck. Uh-huh. Oh, Charlie? Ben, would you mind telling me what in the world you were thinking about? You know what I was thinking about, Charlie. And since when have you gotten so holier than now that... I can remember a couple of times... Now, when... wait a minute. I haven't climbed up your back yet. Sorry. But I'm supposed to, and you got it coming. Okay. Nobody likes Mr. Udo any less than I do, but we haven't got anything on him. He's still a citizen. He's got a barrel of influence. A rotten barrel. I don't care how rotten it is. It causes trouble. And you're a cop, a servant of the people. You can't go pushing people around just because you're a hothead, no matter who they are. Okay, okay. Oh, what am I talking to you for? Get out of here. Pick you up in the morning? If you get out on the right side of bed. Seven o'clock? Yeah. Oh, uh, Ben. Yeah? You have fun? Yeah, Charlie. A lot. Uh, We released the three Udo boys, Lieutenant. We've got a man on each one of them. Well, they're hot. They won't bother anyone. Udo will probably send them out of town. They'll work another city. Want us to close up the four stores we know about? No, these are first offenses. Mm. Just make sure they don't peddle any more numbers. Those people couldn't afford to have their places closed. Well, there's a law against this number. Well, these right? people didn't make any money out of it. They wouldn't have broken the law if they hadn't been worried about getting their heads busted. Uh, ben. Yeah, man. I've got someone out here who'd like to see you. Okay. I didn't hear. Hello, Lieutenant. Well, how are you, Mr. Henderson? How was your dinner? I didn't eat much. I went back and talked to Mrs. Goldberg for a while. Then I went back and talked to my wife. Oh, what'd you talk about? Coming down here. In that lineup, when I said I couldn't identify any of the men who come into my store, I lied. Two of those men been in my store. They, they made me sell the numbers. They pushed me around. Which two men, Mr. Henderson? Tommy Young and George Holston. Get a stenographer, man. Now, here it is, Charlie. 
We can get two of these boys on Mr. Henderson's testimony. We might even make one of them crack and implicate Udo, but it still won't nail anybody for the murder. And the rap isn't tough enough to scare it out of No, them. not these boys. But Udo will get pretty worried if he knows we've got a witness that'll send two of his boys to stir. All right. We keep what we've got quiet until the trial is set. We just pick up Young and Holstamp and say nothing about Mr. Henderson. We pick up Young and Holstamp, yes. But I want Udo to know who our witness is. Have no witness at all? Mr. Henderson has agreed to help us out. He knows just what he's up against. All he wants is his family out of the way in a safe place. We can do that, but Ben, you know how tough it is to Look, try so to... does Henderson. I'll have three detectives on him 24 hours a day. But I want it to look like he's alone. Udo's no dummy. He knows you wouldn't let a witness out on the street without protection. I'm going to put an obvious man with Henderson. When we think one of Udo's torpedoes are ready to go to work, we'll pull the man off, make it look like he got lazy. I want somebody to try for Henderson. It's the only way we'll get any of Udo's crowd to tell about the Goldberg murder. Okay, but how are you going to know when Udo's boy gets ready to go to work? I got somebody and everybody Udo knows, even his mother. <laughs> Want some coffee? Oh, I've had seven cups already this morning now. Oh, I think I'm catching a cold. Everybody's got one. Anything on you, Doe? Uh-uh. He's laying low. None of his boys have even gone near Henderson. Who's, uh, who's with Henderson today? Ames, Fisher, and McCarthy. Quine's playing it out in the open. Hey. Hey, I think McCarthy's wife's supposed to have her baby any day now. Shouldn't we give him a shower or something? Because <coughs> <Gesundheit. coughs> Thanks. Oh, boy. You really got a bad one, haven't you? Oh, yeah. The worst. You know, I haven't had a cold in nearly worse than wood. Two years. Let's go, Lieutenant. Yeah, what have you got? One of Udo's boys, Ernest Conway, just tried to gun Henderson. They're bringing him in now. We've got Udo tagged in case Conway wants to talk. Okay. Well, good morning, Lieutenant. Hello, Ernest. Oh, you don't look so happy, Ernest. Too darn early in the morning, Sergeant. I hear you tried to take a shot at our witness. You know something? I should have known better. I must be getting downright feeble in the head. I knew you had one cop on him, spotted him right away. Then when we went outside for a smoke, I never figured you had more boys on Anderson. Big, stupid me. Just thought how lucky it was that cop went off and left Henderson like that. Well, we all make mistakes, Ernest. Yes, sir, I guess so. But I sure do feel silly. We're going to try our best to see you get life. Yes, sir. Uh, you'll have company. Old Step and Young will get you five to ten. That ain't much company. Look, fellas, I, I'm just a country boy, and I put my foot in it, but I figure you got something on your mind or you wouldn't be down here. Hmm? Well, we would just want to ask you some questions. Yes, sir. You want to make a deal, huh? We don't mm -hmm. have to make a deal. You mean if I was to tell you who done that killing, you wouldn't help me out of prison a little early? Life's a long time. You just turn states and bound to be easy. How much easier? Oh, maybe ten with time off for good behavior. I don't know. Well, ten's a lot better than life, fellas. I don't mind doing time because I got downright careless. But just being a country boy who likes fresh air... I don't think I could stand it for the rest of my life. George Holstamp killed that fella. Who was with him? You got him locked up. Tommy Young? Yes, sir. Where were you? With Mr. Udo. You can ask him. I'm going to. Boy, I should have made a mistake, didn't I? You sure did, country boy. something, Guthrie? Want to talk to you, George. Sure. Hey, what's up, George? Social visit. Guthrie wants to talk. You don't say. 
Ask the lieutenant that he have to lock Ernest up in here. I don't know how long I can stand that singing. Yeah, can't you shut that country boy up? Well, he likes to sing. He'll drive us all nuts. Shut up! Show him the confession, man. Oh, sure, sure. The confession? Yeah, read it good. Especially that last paragraph. Huh? Ernest, you meathead, can it? Why, that dirty, rotten little... Hey, Tommy! Huh? That dirty little rat! What's the matter? That rat, that no good rat! Who? Ernest Turner's a rat! What's wrong? He signed a confession. He signed it. I got it right here. Ernest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right here. He signed it. You shut up, you lousy hell, Billy! He signed a confession? He's got us up on a murder rap, that dirty, stinking little... Ernest! Ernest! Did you rat on us? I ain't gonna take a rap for nobody. George, shut up. You shut up. Wanna tell us about Udo? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you anything you wanna know about Udo. Shut up, George, shut up. You shut up, Tom. Hey, fellas, fellas. I expect a fella to relax with all that noise going on. Udo's in his house. Fine. Matt and I'll do this. What the devil? Get your clothes on, Udo. What do you want, Guthrie? Get your clothes on. You're coming down to the station. Where's your warrant? Right here. What's the charge? Oh, we got a lot of... We got a new trio down at the station singing all over the place. Now, let's go, Udo. Get out of the way. I haven't got time to... He's making a break. Look out! I, I got his gun. I'll take him, Matt. Oh. All right. Let's get him out of here. <laughs> right. Both okay? Yeah. Uh, help me with you, though. Hey. What's the matter with you? <coughs> oh. You know, I think I'm catching your lousy cold. Lineup, or before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line... The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Dave Young, Ed Begley, Larry Dobkin, Barney Phillips, Lou Krugman, Bill Conrad, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. By the time Friday night rolls around, you're in the mood for relaxation, plus having the feeling it's time to get caught up on the world after a busy week. With this in mind, CBS brings you two one-hour programs every Friday evening, Songs for Sale and Hear It Now. Songs for Sale and Hear It Now are broadcast every Friday on most of these same CBS stations. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS for the Jack Smith, Dinah Shore, Margaret Whiting show is heard every weekday evening, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>